for the 350, Luke, you've, you've got a, a nice little fancy in that one. Yeah, I really like Sizing Simpson. It was out for a while, uh, but two years ago it won the first race on this card today, the Neptune uh, Investment manager, Management Novices Hurdle. But it's, it's looked a chaser for a long time. It's got a beautiful build on it, and it won first time of offences, just about holding on, and then it went to Listowel and came third over two and a half miles. So to step up to three is definitely going to help today. It jumps fantastically, and any Henry de Bromhead horse that's bought over over to Cheltenham at this time of year has to be respected, yeah. to be quite honest. I think he's about 11 to 2 at the moment. Yeah. A bit like your Tommy Stack over the red car. Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. Henry de Bromhead's yeah. actually in, you know, been cracking form in yeah, Ireland exactly. as well, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't shy away from that as a bet. Um, Sandy, um, so just reiterate that one very quickly. Uh, Sizing Symphony. Sizing Symphony. We we're not going to touch on the 350 with no. you, Sandy, but there are a couple of other mentions for a couple of other horses. Yeah, I'm going to jump to the, the 425, uh, which is the, the maiden hurdle. It's a horse that I've um, been a keen follower of since he won a, his bumper for Seamus Mullins at 28 to 1 in January on heavy ground. Um, he's something been bought by the Leach Yard, uh, the Sophie Leach. Um, he ran at Plumpton and he carried a penalty where he beat a horse called Cannon Fodder. And the form has worked out quite well. Cannon Fodder is, f is from Sheena West and he's substantially won off about a mark of 107. Yeah. And this Antiros, <sighs> I spoke to Christian Leach about him and this is sort of their big win to hope this year. And I think he's going to be probably around sort of the 10, 12 to 1 mark. 10, 12 to 1 mark? Yeah. He's got two, you know, he's got two wins to his name. He's unbeaten. Yeah. That's yeah. quite a good price, isn't Th it? There's or a reason because there's a Paul Nichols hot pot. Well, Lacks right. and Tyner's odds on, apparently. Yeah. Which is crazy. You know, <laughs> right, well, what's, what's Paul Nichols hot pot? <laughs> uh, Lacks from Tyner, it's called. <laughs> okay. The reason, I'll go back to um, Antiros. He was supposed to be originally to run on the 10th of this month at Exeter. But the stable have switched him for this race, and I think that's sort of a tip in itself. Okay. I think he's definitely one to keep an eye on. Okay. Now, there's one other mention for another horse. Yeah, I'm skipping back to the uh, five o'clock at Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. He was actually last year's winner of the race, Hunter's Lodge. He was quite fortunate. He probably wouldn't have won that day. A horse called Run Chan come to the last and actually fell. And Hunter's Lodge, he sort of just wandered by himself. Yeah. He sort of veered to the right, and he thought, oh, we definitely wouldn't have won. He's, I think he won off a mark of 115. He's now rated 123. The Twist, Twist and Dave's Yard are in good form. They've put a new amateur... And they do get winners yeah, at this point. They, they, they always are at this yeah. They do. Always. And he's currently about 12 to 1. And I, I've got a feeling that if you see any money for this creep tomorrow, it would surprise me if he's won a big race. OK. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Luke, is there any other bits and pieces from you at Cheltenham before we wrap up? <laughs> After the 350, it gets a bit difficult, doesn't it? Um, I'd, I'd give Anteros a shout after what we were saying uh, off camera, but I, th I think Five Star Wilsham could have a chance earlier on in the season in the five o'clock race. But other than the ones I've mentioned, there's nothing to really get too stuck into, to be quite honest. Do you know much about the amateur, Miss V Wade? I know very little about the amateur. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say with the amateurs, you know, yeah. you, are you looking for the one you know in there? You know, you've obviously got whoever you're, uh, Whaley Cohen. Uh, yeah. Sam Wiley Cohen takes a ride. Alice yeah. Freddie Al Mitchell as well. Um, your selection, Sandy. Well, I've got myself in a bit of a, a muddle again, Peter, like I always do. Right, All okay. these papers getting everywhere. Do you want to go to Luke? I can that? read on the screen. Oh, actually. There you go. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier. Yeah. In the 240, you can see there at Cheltenham, uh, Tarquin de Sill. Um, I'll obviously, what McCoy said about him last season. Um, be interesting to see what he's like over fences this year. I can see him being one of the big races come. I think they're stepping up to three miles at some point as well. Um, in the 315, he is a bit of a tricky horse to catch right, but Possel is of definite interest. I can see him staying on late when others have had enough. And in the 4.25, as we just touched on Antreos. Am I saying that right, by the Anteros. way? Anteros. Anteros, I apologise. In the 5 o'clock at Cheltenham, I'll go with Hunter's Lodge, who won the race last year. OK. Um, you're happy with those selections? I'm happy with those selections. What do we yeah. expect out of them? One or two? One maybe placed? I'm in good form at the moment. I don't normally like to blow <laughs> my own trumpet, but this type of year I do, I do seem to be okay this time of year. I, I tend, to, as it gets a bit busier over Christmas, Okay. it's tricky. I'd Great like. stuff. So we've got Sandy Bow and his trumpet. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe playing the triangle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so w what are your selections, Luke? I play it louder than you. Yeah, uh, the, two t the 210 Pure Science is, I think, a good thing, especially with the market support tonight. I, I can't see anything beating it in that race, especially not Ronald Butter <laughs> with you. We'll see on Saturday. <laughs> then we go to uh, Haydock for personal opinion that I know you sort of shunned a little bit earlier on. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, horse. yeah, yeah, you know, you're, uh, you're right, I did yeah. shun it. <laughs> <laughs> for we'll no good reason soon. either. Uh, it was staying on well in its maiden and has to have a chance tomorrow. Then Especially that uh, Charlie Appleby's hit a nice flat spot as well. He had he's had two winners in the last two days. 
No, that's, <laughs> that's not a bad spot, I would say. No, no. Uh, Captain Sunshine, the quirky horse, we'll call him. He's been called every name under the sun in the 315 at Cheltenham. And we'll round it off with four winners with Sizing Symphony in the 350 at Cheltenham. And that's the nap of the day. And don't forget, um, he's claimed to have four winners. And, and next week, if he does that, I'll go for the Goliath. Um, <laughs> Tom, your selections. Yeah, it's good to see that you want the uh, selections again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two twenty Haydock Park, Battersea has got every chance. Seven or eight to one, will be staying on at the at the end. New new, uh, new triple suit. Four oh five Baraz uh, Haydock Park will will actually win that race uh, for sure. Uh, Four fifty at Red Car, Great Minds, uh, Tommy Stack, Wayne Lord, and why are they riding? Uh, why are they bringing one over to Red Car? I don't know, but that will probably win as well. Uh, 6.45, and this will be a bit of an outsider because there's no Brian Horse in the field, but this is at Dundalk, 6.45, and that is Paddy Mack back to six furlongs, and Gelded will probably make all. Okay. Now, it is that time of the night where I sort of sit up a little bit, right, because I give my selections. And this last Thursday I gave point. two out of three, and the other one was a non-runner, so it ain't too bad. People do take note of me. Um, Haydock, 4.05. Uh, Berez, we do agree there. I think it might be a bit short, but uh, you know, as I said, when Varian puts a hood on, I think nine times out of ten they actually win. You ever go in for a short price one? No, I might put a hood on you if you don't shut up. <laughs> uh, Children, <laughs> two ten. <laughs> if you're into that. two ten, rum and butter. Tongue tied. I'm going to be better, Pete. <laughs> absolutely tongue tied. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, you made me laugh. Uh, rum and butter, two ten will beat Pure Science, and the two forty, I'm going with Sandy with Tarkin. De Sil. I think that um, horse, we reckon about 11 to 4. Yeah, 3 to 1, I think you're getting the exchanges right now. So. Okay.